So you join me, bright and breezy, Saturday morning at the Great Electric Train Show. As you can see, all the traders and exhibitioners are doing the final touches to their stands and layouts before the hordes come in. I think the people are queuing um, already outside. I think we've got half an hour to go until the advance ticket holders come in. Um, so we're gonna go and prepare to uh, hopefully bring you some nice footage of the day and show you what layouts are about and uh, what's happening. So, join me soon. Well, welcome to King's Park. It's a 26 foot layer by about four foot wide. It's in an N gauge or two mil. And as you can see, we're in 1980s mode. 1980s on, mode. And we're on the West Coast main line. Um, technically it's Queen's Park, uh, but for model license, it's King's Park. King's Park. And we're just north of London, uh, north of London, Euston. So for someone who's never seen King's Park, can you describe the layout? We can. Uh, is that easy? <laughs> no, it's not, because it's <laughs> overhead wires. Uh, so we're using overhead wire gantries um, for the uh, AC electric low coast. Yep. Uh, also, we've got some third rail out there. Uh, and again, that's using the uh, pickups on the, uh, uh, on the rail. Uh, at the back is sidings. In fact, we've got 12 sidings for the down lines. We've got 12 sidings for the up lines. At the far end, we've got a Wilsdon depot and we've got the North London line going across. And then we've got another panel up the other end of the layout, which operates all the underground, which is basically the Bakerloo line and the Watford lines. Yeah. Because it's multiple levels this layout. But it is indeed, yes. Somehow managed to... Somehow managed to... It looks flat. <laughs> that's it. Um, it's nice to see, as you can see, it's six boards put together. It's completely flat, except for, say, the underground. As we go and under. This is, this is where our little illusion uh, happens. It's very clever. That's it. <laughs> I'll explain how this illusion of the underground happens. The two tracks for the Bakerloo line... Yep. Uh, dip down into the baseboard to about three inches uh, depth. But on the front, we have some mini buildings. Uh, this is actually Kilburn High Street. And we've got some large buildings, and then you can see they're gradually being stepped down. So medium-sized buildings, we've got tunnel portals, we've got the gantries and the wires, of course, and then we've got the track bed. But from the front, when you see the underground shooting down, with those buildings in place and the step down, you get that illusion of the Bakerloo line uh, dipping down into the underground. And it works really well. Oh, thank I you. Think. Thank you very much. It's, uh, you would assume there's a lower level behind the scenes yes, as well. Yes, that's it. That's that, the... And that's the illusion. Um, as you can see at the back, it's all, <coughs> Sorry. all, all flat. Uh, so moving on, I mean, looking at the fiddle yard, you've got an absolutely massive fiddle yard, massive, as you said. Yes. Oh. Which is full of stock. It's full of stock and it's almost full length trains. Is it so all yours? It's me and Paul Preston <laughs> at the other end. He's uh, operating the uh, up, up lines. The Gives you a good excuse to buy it. Yes. <laughs> uh, we actually, to be honest with the uh, public, uh, this is years of collecting trains uh, and stock from like second hand markets, etc, etc. Uh, so what we've done, we've allowed us to then build nine car sets, uh, prototypical of what ran in the yeah. 1980s, uh, which is quite nice. Other stock is um, class 86s that Preston uh, Paul uh, uh, built years ago. 
and I built, for example, a scratch-built APTP. I was going to say it's standing there in front of us. Yes. Uh, That's I'll, incredible. I'll, I'll You'd explain. think that came out of a box from yes, a manufacturer, yeah. wouldn't you? Well, I'll be honest with you. Not to blow you up too much. <laughs> no, it took three years to build. Oh, blimey. Um, and the swear tin was overflowed by then. But basically, when I looked at a Mark III coach, I realised that it was very similar to an APT coach. The only thing I had to do, technically, was cut the Mark III coach gangway or door gangway off and use the toilet window as the APT gangway. Oh, and when you looked at a blueprint of an APT, bingo, it matched 100%. It yep. Apart from the roof profile, um, I managed to make a, a body from a Mark III Farish coach. So, yeah, I was like a little bit pleased when it sort of came together. I mean, the hard work's paid off, it looks and incredible. And it paid off, yeah. It took me uh, the third winter to actually respray it and make the detail, the fine detail to it. Uh, and I like to paint in little bits of yellow uh, on the bogies, etc., etc., just to fool the eye. To make, ob the eye can't absorb everything as it's moving yeah. along the uh, layer. That's the beauty of Engage. And that's the yeah, that's <laughs> the, it is the beauty. Um, I noticed you've got a pep on the layout as well. Yes, uh, a pop is um, we 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 call it the 310. Yeah. This ran up to about 1985. Yeah. Um, it had a li little livery change, and then they, they started to scrap the uh, for new units in real life. So we've got a nice a little 310, and I thought to myself, I'd love to have one on the layout, as we're 1980s. Luckily for us, in this day and age, we've got uh, a company out there called Electric Vinyls, Electric Vinyls, and there's basically like a sticker. So all we need to do is get a Mark II body from Farish, Use nail varnish remover, clear, clean off the old print that was printed onto this uh, Mark II body so that you end up with a nice clear shell. Then you apply your stickers from electric vinyl, you buy a little cab end, uh, I suppose the 3D printed cab end, and paint it yellow and away you go. You see, that's it's, been in front of me for 10 minutes yeah, now, and I wouldn't and, have and guessed that. You wouldn't have guessed that it. That looks amazing. Yeah. And it's amazing now that we're in this age where you can go it's down so that crisp route. as well. Yeah, oh, detail. thank you very much. Um, yeah, we, so we can clear print off the old bodies. So you've got a clear body shell and, and put a sticker on. Or, you, in this modern day and age, we can go for the 3D... Um, I think they call it 3D printing. Now that is a sign of the times, that and is. And it is a sign of the times. And again, you paint it, or you can use uh, stickers. Uh, for this example, on a 313, I've got N-Train's uh, 3D printer. These 3D pad uh, CAD uh, bodies, uh, the pure white in colour, uh, come straight out of the box. So for example, I painted mine, but you can put stickers on, uh, etc. If, if, if you need to. Using transfers and resprayed it into the uh, BR Blue 313 and ended up with a, a nice 313 body. Is it is it an expensive option to 3D print yeah, your own? Yeah, a model? little bit at the moment. I think uh, at the moment we, the 3D printing is is new, yep. new to modelling. Uh, so, but I think in the next couple of years, well, I think we'll see the price coming down. I think what I love most about this layout is this. Ten things going on at once. It's yes. not a still layout by any means. That is um, our golden rule. Uh, keep if, things moving. If we can keep things moving, the public are happy. Um, in fact, it's a bit of a movement overload. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry to say. <laughs> now, I mean, I know you'll uh, try and take the credit, but you actually brought a big team with you to help run it. I have indeed. Um, Who have we got? Uh, me and Preston, Paul, and his family, and the boys. We all decided, yeah, let's give it a go. So we cleaned her. We uh, repaired her. Plugged her in and she worked. So we was back on the onto a winner. Ex yeah, that's it. And we was back on the exhibition scene uh, by 2014 again. So and we're in the public because a lot of people say by the, then have, the crowds haven't died off or we've been here. No, they see it and very popular. Layout. Some people thought it's still retired, but and they're, and they're just amazed that it's still here uh, running uh, as as the day it was when it was built. So which is the great news. Um, Obviously, massive layout your 
building it up and taking it apart in the various shows, what kind of maintenance goes on behind the scenes well, for it? <laughs> Is it easy? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, we do have to clean it like any other exhibition layout. But we've got a little uh, top tip for your uh, viewers. Cool. Uh, first thing we do is the Pico rubber, uh, track rubber I should say. Uh, that needs to go on the track and clean every section of track yep. uh, with the Pico rubber. Then of course the hoover, uh, because the rubber uh, breaks off a little bit of uh, uh, material. Flex. Oh, flex, yeah, that's it. Uh, so a good hoover after that. And then part three is the carbon stick. Ooh. This is our little Ooh. top tip for your viewers. You can get this from any art shop or even e eBay. Um, they're only a couple of pounds as well. Uh, carbon stick. And all we do is turn the power off. We then do any straights or any curves, but without points. So you basically run your carbon stick all over the uh, track or the tra track rail. Don't do the points because that super electrifies them. Yep. In other words, the current goes one way and the other way. Um, if you did do that, you just wipe it off with a soft cloth and you're back to a square one again. So that's the good news. But so we, we really only do the straights because this carbon or graphite stick will go onto the wheels and the wheels will spread the carbon around. That's why it runs so well. And it runs so well. Uh, you've got beautiful uh, contact with the wheels and the chassis and the motors. So that's our little top tip to your your viewers. That's amazing, I want to go find myself one of them. Yeah, and two pounds, two yeah. pounds. How about that? So much to repackage that, yeah. sell that in this industry. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> repackaged it with a 10 pound price tag. Uh, so yes, yeah, so that's our top tip and it's smooth running. Uh, trains will run quite smoothly. There's one thing I will recommend is if all gauges, N-gauge or double O, is uh, one of these uh, wheel brushes. Uh, so every, uh, every day after the show, if the loco has picked up a lot of dirt on the wheel sets, it's ideal to just use your brush, you set that down on your track, uh, power up, and put your loco on the brush, and that just cleans off any dirt that's within the wheels. That's the secret to a good exhibition layout yeah, and home and it layout. just stops any loco stuttering or stopping, uh, especially over points. Yeah. So it's another little final thing that we do to keep things running. Right, well, I'm going to go and film a bit more of the layout, but thank Please you very do. much for inviting me behind the scenes to see it all. Thank um, you. It's a pleasure to see it all. I know you're not doing any of the work, but the team is the behind team, you. The yes. So, um, yeah, see, I must the real give, work is behind it. Must give credit to uh, uh, Preston Paul. Uh, Susan and her boys. So to everyone we, else, basically. Yeah, once they're to trained up, um, we can go to the bar. <laughs> Do you get much chance to see the rest of the show while you're? No, unfortunately. Um, maybe Sunday afternoon, as it goes quiet, we might be able to sneak off and get some supplies, electrical supplies, so like more points and uh, gadgets for the layout <laughs> to keep it running. <laughs> I would say I'd take over for you, but it'd be soon destroyed. <laughs> soon destroyed. Oh, I'm sure you'll be all right. <laughs> but, uh, well, thank you very much, Andy. No, thank you very much indeed. Good, uh, absolute uh, pleasure.
Right, so I'm on the absolutely massive layout Grindley Brook and I'm joined very kindly by Pete. Um, can you tell us a bit more about this huge O-gauge layout? Okay, well Grindley Brook is based on a real place in Shropshire. It's where the Langothan Canal goes under the old railway line between, it used to run between Whitchurch and Chester. But unfortunately that line got lifted in the 1960s. Um, there's a series of locks at Grinley Brook that are still there on the Langothan Canal. It's about five locks that go down and eventually go underneath the railway line through a small tunnel, which we've modelled as a bridge. Yeah. Um, the, the, all the railway embankment's still there, but all the lines are lifted and it's been overgrown. We, we actually visited the, the original site of Grinley Brook last summer just to see if it was anything like we've modelled. <laughs> and is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the way, isn't it? Yeah. Now, the, the original station <coughs> Grinley Brook, the real one, was just a wooden station halt. Um, and to be perfectly honest, I joined the club about 13 or 14 years ago. And most of the club's been going for around about 35, nearly 40 years now. They had already more or less designed the layout before I joined. So I joined literally when we started building everything. And they told me that they, they were looking on the maps, Ordnance Survey maps, trying to find a place uh, in London Northwestern area where a canal went underneath the railway line and they found this place called Grinley Brook that they didn't know anything about on the on the Ordnance Survey maps. And so they designed a station because they didn't even know a station existed. <laughs> and it was only after we more or less built most of it that we discovered in a book there actually was a station. <laughs> oh. And that's why and it was a, just a wooden station halt um, for one platform. And so that's why our model is nothing like a wooden station yeah. halt. <laughs> and of course, I suppose for the viewers at home who haven't made it to the Great Electric Train Show, how big is this layout? Because it's, I mean, it's absolutely huge. Mm. I'm stood in the middle of it. Yeah. That gives uh, some perspective. Well, it's 34 feet from side to side yep. and back to front it's 20 feet which is but, I'm sure it's bigger than my house <laughs> well it's, it's going to be a little bit deeper because we're rebuilding all the fiddle yard at the back oh because we've got so much stock we can't get it all on so we're going to add two extra sidings and you can get two trains in each siding right. so it gives us a chance to run four extra trains I can say because you've got a lot of stock now yeah well, we've got a lot more we can't get. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I had yeah. this much stock. <laughs> well, it's all clubs, you know, members. It's not, uh, a lot of members have been modelling for years and years. And I was going to say, going back to that, it's obviously a club layout. Yeah. Um, how many people have you brought with you, slash how many people does it take to run the layout? We bring, for shows, we do a team of eight. Yep. Um, that seems to do as well. We, and today we've got an extra member, Steve, over there, who's come up just for the day to make us nine. Yeah. But we can manage with eight. Um, Things he does for a free ticket. Yeah, he got a free ticket, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the, the club itself is more or less divided into three sections. It's Hillingdon Railway Modellers Club, very close to Heathrow Airport. Yeah. And we've, this is the O-Gage section. And in our section, we've got about nine or ten members. Um, then we've got a, a four mill section. Um, they've got about 20 members, I think, something like that. And then there's a, an O-gauge section with about five or six members. And we meet um, in a church hall, which is very kind that we've been there quite a few years. And very, very traditional, that. Yes. <laughs> We, after prayers, we, <laughs> we've got a, they've very, because we've been there so long, they've allowed us to build a storeroom at the end of their church hall. Oh, blimey, yeah. Um, which is really great for us. But one of the reasons the Grinley Brook is actually quite a narrow layout is because we just don't have enough storage space to make it. We would have loved to add an extra width, an extra foot around the whole scenic width. Yeah. But we just don't have room in the store to... To, to put it in there. So that's really what's dictated the size of the layout. 
as I wish I had a layout this big. I was going to say, as with so many layouts, they're dictated to by the buildings they're in. But well, exactly. You've outgrown a big building. Well, <laughs> we're, we're quite lucky. We can get this up in the church hall. Um, but obviously, when we were building it, we were just building you know, with maybe two or three boards at any one time. So it's, it's rare that we have the whole thing up in the church hall at one time, but it will fit. And then, as, I suppose, as for the uh, show itself, um, have you enjoyed it so far? Yeah, it's been a great show. Very good crowd, which is always Very nice. good atmosphere. Good atmosphere. Over the weekend. Yeah, the, the organisers are brilliant. Um, no, it's been great. Yeah, and it's not too far to drive up from London, so when we set it up on Friday, you know, we weren't too exhausted from a long drive from London. <laughs> no, but yeah. wonderful. Well, yeah. The next show we're doing is York next Easter. Oh. Yeah, that's a three-day show. And, I might uh, be at that. I'll be good to see you again. Yeah, yeah, that'd be see great. See if you've made the improvements. No, it won't be finished. Uh, we, oh. we, we've only just started designing it. One of the problems we've had is on all our points for the fiddle yard at the back are, are curved points. Yeah. And when Pico brought out the curved point, we thought, oh, great, that's just what we need. But unfortunately, it hasn't been a success. So we're going to hand build all the curved points. We're going to make the radius larger. I mean which will allow us to run some of the bigger locomotives, like we've got a 9F and things like that, which we can't run in here because the radius is slightly too tight. So the idea is to widen the radius and give us extra roads at the back. But it's going to take, well, it's taken us 13 years to build this. So it'll probably take us another two years to build all Definitely the rest. labour of love. To rebuild all <laughs> that, yeah. Well I, mean, well, I mean, it's absolutely fantastic. Good. And thank you very much for giving me that insight into the this wonderful layout okay well i'm glad you enjoyed it yeah well thank you very much thank you i'll let you get on all right cheers thank you so you join me on the acura scale stand and i'm with fran how's it going lovely to be joined by you on Good your own stand you i don't know where i'm going Absolutely. with that i'm really excited Good. We've got the deltic yeah um we got the first prototype sample this fella here um just over just under two weeks ago and we've done a lot of assessment about it and it's obviously the first time public have seen it uh, we put up some video and publicity stuff, but it's good to see, get good uh, feedback here from uh, the guys who come to the show over the weekend, and it seems universally popular, so we're quite happy with that. Lots of pre-orders. Uh, a hell of a lot, yeah. It's been amazingly popular since we launched at Warley last year. Um, obviously, we've done a wide variety of them, but um, it's yeah, it's since we've come in here today, actually, there's been a lot of people who have come and seen it this weekend and said, I've already ordered it, I want to upgrade it to sound, because they obviously are getting excited about it now, and... You can see the value we're adding with the sound project on it too. And it's actually really, really heavy model in the flesh as well. Yeah, I think it's around 786 grams. We weighed it in, uh, Patrick weighed it in the uh, office when it arrived. And it Things was he fr- does. Yeah, absolutely. It was, it was marked heavy on the box when it arrived. Um, so we've packed a lot of weight into it. But um, unfortunately, the only thing this hasn't got at the moment is the tech that's going to go into it. But um, it'll have a, a nice circuit board with capacitors and then obviously the chip as well. So, I mean, that's going to be really exciting with twin speakers. And of course, also we have two new announcements at the show. We do indeed. Uh, we have continued obviously expanding our wagon uh, range, which we've obviously we've become very well known for. Uh, so we've started with the JSA steel uh, open coil carrier, which is the most, most modern one, which has been converted in the last 18 months from the original ones, which were the uh, covered coil carriers. Um, so that, they were originally converted from PTA wagons. So it was a part of the overall project we were doing. So we decided to hold back on announcing the steel carriers and put out the PTAs first, but they're being developed in conjunction. So they say they should be here in January along with the PTAs. And of course, you can all pre-order all those right now. You can indeed. You can pre-order them with us online at acroscale.com. And it is um, 59.95 for a pack of two wagons in British steel, VTG and livery for the coded ones and VTG black for the modern ones. And you can also pre-order them with our approved stockists. Um, so guys who are some of them which are here today obviously Reza Sheffield Chatham Model Centre uh, TTG Diecast and others as well so um, you can check all out on your website uh, your local model shop can sign up to them and stock our stuff too as that's well that's a really good price to be fair for two wagons yeah it's um, accepting if, if it was one yeah. <laughs> seems to be the norm now that seems to be yeah I mean um, I, we tried what we tried to do is offer best value for money in the sense of doing really good detail but at a reasonable price and I think that's really starting to resonate with people and they're getting excited about that as well. Our PTA has been hugely successful, probably our best pre-order uh, wagon so far and the uh, steel carriers are doing very well as well and I think people are seeing that okay prices have gone up across the board but it's about getting the best value for money and I think that we offer that package between 
detail and then reasonable cost as well. So um, we also do uh, nice uh, uh, bundle deals, whether you order the British steel ones or the VTG ones, or you order them all, we knock a few quid off as well there as well. I was going to say, it's definitely nice to see, um, as, although you're a relatively new player in the market, you're definitely now one of them. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I mean, we've, Acroscales, um, we only really broke cover about 18 months ago. Well, coming up on two years when we first started advertising, we obviously released our coal hopper about 18 months ago. And we've come a long way in a short time and our range is expanding and we're working on a lot of stuff behind the scenes as well that we haven't announced, but we will announce something at Wardy too that people might be interested in. And obviously we'll continue on with that as well, but it's all about building up a range and getting uh, well known. But funny thing is um, we put out the video of the Delta this week and people are, we still see comments on, you know, YouTube and Facebook and like, oh, I never heard of this company before. So people are still yeah. learning about us, which is great. Um, so, and there's plenty more out there, that, whether the Learning Trust magazines or online and videos with yourselves and stuff like that, it's fantastic for us. In terms of the Great Electric Train Show, have you enjoyed it? Oh, fantastic. We love doing the show. This was the first show we did with this stand last year. And the guys at Home Magazine have been so accommodating um, anywhere between the event staff in the arena and obviously the Hornby staff too. Um, you know, Mike and uh, Mark give us great coverage in the magazines as well, which is always fantastic. It was helpful. Uh, absolutely. And then just so many great peop uh, members of the public have come in, really go good crowd, nice kind of uh, friendly atmosphere amongst everyone as well, and everyone really enjoying themselves. And I think these shows are, we love doing them. So we're really looking forward to, we'll be back next year and to all the other shows in between as well. Wonderful. Right. So I'm going to leave Fran to get on with this work and I'm going to pre-order a Deltec. Oh, good so man. Thanks very much. <laughs> See you in a bit. Right, so I'm on West Coast Cement, the Hornby layout, joined by Mike Wilde, the um, editor of Hornby Magazine, as I'm sure everyone is aware, and the organiser of this show. Yes. Yeah. How's it gone for you? It's gone very well, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's been a brilliant weekend. We've had lots of people through the door. Everyone seems happy. We're happy. So we just, uh, we've had a great weekend. You look very calm and collected the whole time, which is incredible, considering <laughs> the, uh, the effort you've gone to to put on the show. Yeah, well, we, we pulled it off well. Though. We, we, we do put a lot of effort into the show to make it what it is, and we do genuinely hope that people enjoy it as well. I'm guessing, I, I suppose you do a lot of work. How many people have you got behind the scenes to help you bring uh, well, something actually, like this to? Yeah, well, actually, here this weekend, we've got 22 people from, yep. the, from the company here working on, this, on the show. Um, and we've got a team of about, there's about six of us involved in it on a regular basis through the year to actually bring it everything together. Six people carrying you? <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. They're all carrying me, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, during the show, there were several awards presented, which were voted for by the members of, members of the public. Yeah, well, we had one voted by the public, and we had two which we had presented by individual companies as well. Yep. So one was presented by Hornby for the best digital layout, yep. and we had a best scenic feature presented by uh, John Lloyd from Green Scene as well. So, and then the, the third trophy was voted for by the public, and that was the best in show trophy. And that one went to Avin at a Lion, which is a 009 narrow gauge layout. It's a great little layout. It's actually 30 years old, that layout, is would you really believe? Yeah, yeah. It's his 30 year anniversary this year. Uh, and then uh, the best digital layout was presented by Hornby to Shelvington and Rides Hill, the Southern Region P4 layout. Uh, they've got a brilliant digital system behind there. They've got all the computer control of the trains. I'm sure people who've been at the show have seen that this weekend. Uh, and the third one, uh, Green Scene, they chose Bournemouth West uh, for the best scenic feature. Uh, and that was for his gardens on the layout there oh, as well. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's an incredible layout. I mean, is. the standard yeah. of the show is just extremely high. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, so, so. I think I'm going to, I don't know if I want to cry or <laughs> enjoy it, just <laughs> comparing it to mine. Um, I suppose we are obviously in the Hornby Magazine layout. Yes. Which yeah. I'm very excited to be in because it's a modern image. Yes. Can yeah. you tell us a bit more about this layout? Oh, right, okay. Well, this layout is it's probably one of our, in some ways, one of our more interesting layouts. Um, it's actually a concoction of various other baseboards out of other layouts, so most of it's recycled. So the bit you're looking at here is actually part of the storage yard from 12 Trees Junction, which is our big southern region 1960s layout. Um, the other part of the fiddle yard at that end is brand new for this layout. But there's actually only two bespoke boards are made for this layout. Um, all the rest of the frontage here, the two middle boards were out of the Shortley Bridge and the Felton Cement Works layout. And the two outer boards are part of that layout storage yard. And we, we recycled all those. The cement works has been recycled as well. Um, and the main addition then has been to change it from being a 1960s northeastern region branch line into a 1990s west coast mainline double track express layout. You've done extremely well at that. Yes. <laughs> You'd never tell. No. <laughs> it was nice to see that through short periods throughout the weekend you've had a chance to play on yes. the, uh, the layout, which is... Yeah. yeah, not as much as usual, but yeah, I've, I've been on here for a little bit this weekend. So. But you can say not as much as me then. Yes. <laughs> I have been a bit cheeky, having a go. Yeah, um, good. There we go. No, I mean, um, oh, thank you for... Um, 
let me come and film the show. Yeah, and thank you very for welcome, putting no on a fantastic yeah. show. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I hope you'll be back next year. Yeah, we'd like you to come back again, so yeah, oh. you're very, very welcome. Oh, thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you, Richard. So that's the end of an absolutely fantastic weekend. The hall is as good as empty now. I'd just like to thank Mike Wilde and the rest of the team at Hornby Magazine for their hospitality this weekend. It's been a fantastic turnout. I'm gonna go now. I've been New Junction. This has been the Great Electric Train Show, and I'll see you next year.